Welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. Today we're going to carry on with this rather laborious process of trying to find a way of turning this what would normally be an engraving RF machine into a, an exciting cutting machine. A cutting monster in fact. We've only got 30 watts here to play with so we're never going to set the world alight. Or can we? Last time we had moderate success against all the odds of lens theory. We juggled with lenses, we juggled with distances and we managed to get something that projected the powerful part of the beam forward as far as a thousand millimetres but we've got to get up to 1300 millimetres. A couple of sessions ago I wasn't ready to give in quite but I think I mentioned last time that a guy called Danny Miller fired my enthusiasm after the last session where we got some pretty good results he became even more enthusiastic and said don't give up you're nearly there all you've got to do is this this and this Danny's suggestions haven't quite worked out how he expected or maybe I'd hoped but that hasn't dampened my enthusiasm for the project I've gone off piste even more now and I've done some experiments in the background and I'd like to bring you up to speed. Now at the end of the last session we managed to achieve these results. The one on the left is where we managed to get to at a thousand millimetres and then we pushed it to 1.3 metres which is where I'm trying to aim for and the middle one was as good as we could get but we had to juggle and jiggle with lenses and distances to get that. I had a times two and a times three beam expander. Now you may remember that I destroyed the times three expander to make my own version of an expander to get this whole project started off. It wasn't too successful. What I've done, I kept the lenses from the times three expander. So I've now utilized some of those components. We're still using the same body of the beam expander, but I'm now experimenting with a lot more lens types because I'm lucky to have quite a few lenses in my collection and 18 millimeter front lenses just happen to fit this beam expander. So here we are at 1300 millimeters, my target distance. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. It's a further improvement on what we had before at 1300 millimeters. What have I done? We had the times two concave first lens from the beam combiner. This time I'm using the times three concave first lens. And we've got a further improvement. So that now becomes our standard to compare with. So here's what the standard times two beam combiner looks like at 1300 millimeters. Penetration, zero. Well, here's a selection of lenses I'm going to be trying. Look, this is the times two beam expander configuration here. Now, what you've just seen is that plus that, which is a two and a half inch focal length lens. Now, I've got two other lenses here, which are slightly bigger than that one in diameter. But fortunately, they're 18 millimeter, which fit fairly snugly inside the thread at the end there. And there is definitely a CVD lens. Look at the different colour. They are using Chinese uh, PVD lenses in this expander. So we're going to replace one two and a half inch PVD meniscus lens for another supposedly two and a half inch PVD meniscus, meniscus lens and see what the difference is. One, two, three, four, five. Well, it's not as good as the original PVD lens. There's the original. So we're now using a two and a half inch gallium arsenide lens. The same focal length, different material. Different refractive index in the material. And we're using it with the convex side outwards. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Pretty awful, wasn't it? That's a two and a half inch lens convex side outwards, zinc selenide. This is exactly the same configuration, two and a half inch lens, convex side out, but gallium arsenide. All I'm gonna do is swap that lens over now 
and put it concave side outwards. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the 2.5 gallium arsenide lens and that's the original 2.5 times 2 front lens. I think it's a 2.5 meniscus PVD lens. That one still wins. We're now going to try a 2 inch gallium arsenide lens with the concave side outwards. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Nope. Still hasn't beaten the best that we've achieved so far. So let's reconfigure this one and see how this performs at 800 and 500. Well, let's see what it looks like at 500 millimeters, shall we? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Well, the top one is at 500 millimetres and the bottom one is at 900 millimetres. And we compare those to what we got at 1300 millimetres, which is this one. That's getting pretty even now. So I've now got to reset the machine. Now that's the beam exiting mirror one. And no, that's not two burns, that's one burn. So we've got a very strange sort of reflection coming off there, but that's not my concern. What I'm really interested in is what happens when it gets through to mirror number two. Let's see if the beam comes through that hole to start with, shall we? Yep. <laughs> and there's some power there. <laughs> Lots of it. I've never done that before. Bear in mind, I haven't touched the x-axis at all, so technically I shouldn't really need to have to reset the x-axis. And then here we are at the front pretty central actually and just a little low there we go spot on so there's my new mark That's pretty good. So we'll just engage the lens tube onto my little setting fixture. So we've got the, the two X and Y axis set up. It doesn't really matter where we now work. Take one of the special targets that's designed to go in here. Okay, now before I set this up, the first thing I've got to do, so I've got to get the beam running parallel with the axis of this lens tube. And I do that by adjusting the screws on the top here. So we've got to swing the axis in two directions to make sure it passes through the top and the bottom in line. So we'll check this. And it's very nicely on centre this way. So we take that out and we put that in the box. Now look at that, spot on. So I haven't got to adjust my mirror. I mean, technically I shouldn't have to because I've not fiddled with it. So at the moment it looks as though it's pretty good in the Y direction, but it's out in this X direction. So what we've got to do is look where that beam is. And that beam is basically low on that mirror. And if it's low on the mirror, it means I've got to raise the beam up the mirror by dropping the head down. I've got to loosen these four head screws off just a little, and we've got to drop the mirror down. So we've got to push the head down slightly. Let's see whether we can do it without go. So it's all nice and snug still. I didn't loosen the screws off too much. And now we'll check what we've done to the dot. A little bit more. And that's spot on. So there we go. So we've now set the beam. Just tighten the screws up and check it one more time. There we go. It's pretty well spot on. So that means the beam is running down the centre of this lens tube. It's not only parallel to the axis, it's dead in line with the axis. So that means that the beam will pass right through the centre, the central axis of the lens that I put in the bottom here. Now I'm just about at the limit that I've found before. Previous cutting tests with this times two beam expander, this two inch lens set up exactly the same as this. So. We've got consistency at the moment with our performance. Yes. This is something I haven't tested before, which is a piece of 10mm 
uh, poplar plywood. I've got no idea what this is going to do, but I'm going to guess at around about five, six millimetres a second. Yes, if you take a look right at the bottom there at six o'clock, you'll see a little bit of what I would think is probably bean drag, just about makes it through at five millimetres a second. Now just a slight imperfection in the plies will give that interruption of the cut. So we'll try another one just to see how consistent we can be. So you can see where it starts and finishes there at three o'clock. And no, it's not inconsistency in the material, it is actually beam drag. So I think we're going to have to say that five millimetres a second is the, the absolute limit that we can push that to. And in fact, if you look at the shape of those marks, you can see the beam drag slightly curved away at the bottom there to the left. So we're right down towards the front corner of the machine now. And we'll just repeat the same test again to see if we get similar results. And look, we've got exactly the same beam drag. If anything, it's a little bit worse, I would think. So there was the first one, and there was the second one. You can see there's quite a significant difference in the width of the beam drag. We're back on the 10 millimeter poplar plywood now. I've modified the Times 2 beam expander to my latest modifications. Now, mind these are not the sharpest modifications that I could achieve but they're modifications which allow me an improvement of some sort over the whole of the work table. What is that some sort? Okay so this is exactly the same as it was before lens, speed, distance, material. All we've done is change the beam expander. We've still got a hint of beam drag, so on the basis of that test, the improvement is nil. We'll run this at 22, which is where we left off. Well, it's just about made it fairly easily. Let's go up to 25. Not really making it. Let's try 24. Well, that's just about, just about. Hmm. I would say that's really a failure as well. Look, left some strings in there. So let's try 23. So that's just about made it cleanly, 23. We're already on 23. This started off at 22. Let's try this at 23. Well, I have to say that really didn't make it. 22. 22. Just about me. Was this five millimeters a second down at this front corner? That looks substantially better. This is six millimeters a second. It's a lovely, beautiful cut. It's a beautifully clean cut, isn't it? And I think you can probably see in there we're back to a noticeable drag now, whereas here it was virtually nothing. So this one and this one are the same. So we got another one millimeter a second at the front edge of the machine. Well, is this a failure? I think I'd like to rephrase it slightly and describe it as a non-success. But I'm not giving up yet. Look, I've still got this thing here, which I've yet to experiment and play with properly. We gave up because we thought it was a total failure, but I haven't fully explored the possibility of this much bigger system. I mean, I can make this shorter, I can make this longer. This has got a lot more flexibility in it. Now, while I've got this machine set up with this 20 millimeter acrylic, it's a fantastic way to show you or demonstrate to those disbelievers, and there are many of them, that think that because this is acrylic and it's shiny and it looks like glass, that the beam drag that you see, i.e. the bending backwards of the beam, 
is caused by the beam bending round the corner and reflecting off the material. Now I can assure you that is not the case. And I will be able to demonstrate that to you very clearly. Light travels in straight lines. This is light energy hitting surfaces. And if you remember all the things that I've told you about light hitting surfaces, it vibrates the molecules, makes them hotter, and they, in this case, evaporate. Because that's the mechanism by which this material disappears. So first of all, let's just burn straight through in a straight line. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to move forward. You can see the bottom of the beam is not moving. Now the beam is starting to drag. Okay. If the beam is truly reflecting around that arc, then it will continue to reflect when I stop. But what happens? No. It just burns straight down. It doesn't continue to reflect around the corner. It's a myth. It's an invention. It's not a fact. So now you're going to ask me, how and why does it bend around the corner? The top of the beam is going to move forward before the bottom of the beam. The molecules at the top are being vibrated, and then the molecules further down are being vibrated, and so on and so on, but they're not being necessarily vibrated by the beam of light. They're being vibrated by the hot gas that is now flowing across the surface. Initially, you'll see how quickly the beam runs down straight and then it starts to curl away. Let's just demonstrate that. So I'll move off. The, the power is on now and I'm gonna move off. Now I've moved off and most of the beam is straight down to about here, halfway down. So up to that point, it's the beam itself which is evaporating the material. And what's happening below here now is caused by the heat effect, the hot gases that are blowing off. So the subsequent cutting is not caused by the beam. It's caused by the evaporated hot gases that are being forced down the You cut. can actually see the instability in the bottom of the beam. To about halfway down, the beam is straight. Sorry to say, Danny, I've had to ignore your recommendations. You've still kept me enthusiastic on the small amount of success or non-failure that we've had so far. And now I've gone back to my original DIY beam expander and I've got the three times optic in the front there and I've got a four inch gallium arsenide plano convex lens in the front there. I want you to see this. I've got no idea what this is going to come out like. All I've done has been testing various combinations of lenses and distances on a piece of card. At this distance, 900 millimeters. Let's see what we've got. Zero. One, two, three, four, five seconds. Well, here's how I have been checking it, like that. And as we can see, we've got a very small spot there. So now we can do one at 1300. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we're losing it a little bit. Let's take it back a little bit and see if we can make a slightly smaller hole. Zero, one, two, three, Four, five. We've gone the wrong way. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Well, that's substantially better than we had with any other result at 1300 millimeters. Can I get it any better? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Quite the same. I'll mark that because. I mustn't lose that position. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. I've taken another half a millimetre over. One, two, three, four, five. So as you can see, there's about a two millimetre range there. 
over which I've got a very, very good pointy concern. So we're going to put the mirror back and give this a so try. this time, I'm going to check, do a mode burn at the back corner of the machine. We're going to check how the beam is changing after it's bounced off of two mirrors. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Well, that's pretty grim, isn't it? So let's go to the middle of the machine. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. It's a little better at the middle of the machine. Let's try the front of the machine. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. We've got what we want at the front of the machine, but not at the back of the machine or the middle of the machine. So, first of all, let's prove the point. We've got a very sharp beam at the front, so we should be able to get extremely good cutting. So with the normal times two at the top left there, we were able to get maximum five millimeters a second. Even down at the front corner there on the right, five millimeters a second. This one over here. Okay. Now we're able to get eight millimeters a second down at the front which is a significant improvement. Well, this apparently dodgy beam, let's see what it does at the back of the machine. Let's try six millimetres over. So we've lost it at the back. So we've now got the opposite to a normal machine, i.e. we've got good cutting right at the front and very mediocre cutting at the back. I say mediocre, it's still 20% better than the normal two times beam combiner. So we've proved that if we can keep the beam really small all the way over the table, and at the moment we haven't achieved that, but with that size beam at the front of the table we've been able to achieve a 60% gain in cutting performance. I certainly expected to chew through this 10mm acrylic. Try 3mm a second, shall we? Not quite. Two millimetres a second, I suspect, will be okay. Yeah, that's cut through fairly cleanly. Just pop that straight out. So perhaps we haven't finished this saga yet. From success at the back, with a short beam expander, and not much success at the front, to success at the front with a long beam expander, and not much success at the back. I think one can logically conclude that somewhere between these two there is a combination that looks as though it might give me what I'm looking for.